हेलो एवरीवन दिस साइड डॉक्टर कविता सिग्वाल सो टुडे वी विल डिस्कस माइकलसन इंटरफेरोमीटर सो माइकलसन इंटरफेरोमीटर इज अ डिवाइस बेस्ड ऑन इंटरफेरेंस ड्यू टू डिवीजन ऑफ एम्पलीट्यूड सो नाउ लेट्स सी व्हाट इज द कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ दिस डिवाइस सो इन दिस डिवाइस लाइट फ्रॉम अ सोर्स इट इज वेल कॉलिमेटेड थ्रू अ लेंस एंड इज मेड टू इंसिडेंट ऑन अ ग्लास प्लेट this glass plate basically is the beam splitter whose function is to divide the amplitude so this beam splitter it is partially silvered from the back when the light is incident on this beam splitter a part of this will be transmitted and a part of this will be reflected the reflected beam will move towards mirror m1 and the transmitted beam will move towards mirror m2 this mirror m2 is a fixed mirror while this mirror m1 is a movable mirror so the light incident on these two mirrors they will be reflected back from the two mirrors m1 and m2 and will meet at point o to interfere to give you the interference pattern so that interference pattern is observed through the telescope okay so to find uh, to study the interference pattern we need to find the part difference so let us first see what will be the part difference so these length of these two mirrors from the glass plate it is kept fixed l okay but if we see the part traveled by the two rays the transmitted beam is totally in air so it is traveling path equal to l while going towards mirror m2 and l while coming from the mirror m2 while the ray which is reflected from the glass plate it is traveling through the glass plate let's say medium of this glass plate is of refractive index mu and thickness is t so it is having an additional part difference of mu minus 1 into t while going towards mirror m1 again when it is coming back it again travels through the glass plate so it is traveling twice hence this 2 mu minus 1 into t is the additional part difference in the path of beam which is going towards mirror m1 so we need another glass plate to compensate this part difference so this g dash this is the compensating plate it is kept in the path of mirror m1 uh, sorry m2 because this g dash through this g dash the transmitted beam will travel twice once going towards mirror m m2 and other going uh, going back from the mirror m2 so again it will also have an additional part difference of 2 mu minus 1 into t so this this g dash will compensate the extra path of the ray going towards mirror m1 so this is the role of compensating plate now the separators is ready to take the readings now so what will be the interference pattern so interference pattern can be analyzed as if the mirror m2 its image is m2 dash seen through the glass plate so m2 dash and m1 these two act as the two surfaces of a parallel thin film and between these two surfaces of the parallel thin film the interference is taking place and you are observing the pattern through the telescope which is kept below okay now let us understand the formation of circular fringes through the michelson interferometer so as we have already discussed the construction of michelson interferometer that the light from a collimated source is made to incident on the beam splitter where it divides into two part transmitted beam and reflected beam which is going towards the two mirrors m1 and m2 and this g dash is the compensating plate which compensate for the extra part difference uh, traveled by Uh, extra part difference 2 mu minus 1 into t so let us understand how the fringes are analyzed so this glass plate g which is partially silvered from the back this makes a makes an image m2 dash of mirror m m2 parallel to mirror m1 the condition for the parallel image with m1 is this m1 and m2 they should be exactly perpendicular to each other if the two mirrors are exactly perpendicular to each other then mirror m1 
and image of mirror M2 dash through this glass plate, these two will be exactly parallel to each other. So this will act as a parallel thin film. Through parallel thin film, as we know that fringes are a locus of all the points of equal inclination. So we have to see where is the inclination. So this is your film and you are viewing through the telescope. So from the axis of this telescope, axis of the telescope at equal inclination, if we join all the points equally inclined to the axis of the telescope, if we join all the points, the locus of all the points in the mirror M1, this will be a circle. Hence the circular fringes will be observed through the telescope which is kept below. So now let us understand what will be the part difference for this circular fringes which are observed through the telescope. So let these are two mirrors. One is M1 and other is the image of mirror M2 that is M2 dash. So let the si uh, light from the source S, this is incident on the mirror M1 and M2 dash. This is reflected through the mirrors M1 and M2 dash and is observed in the telescope. It meets on the axis of telescope. So this light which is reflected through mirror M1 and M2 dash, it appears as if coming from the virtual sources S1 and S2. So these are two virtual sources made from the single sources. Hence these two are coherent sources. So they will produce interference. The light will interfere to give you the interference pattern through the telescope. So as these two mirrors M1 and M2 dash, they are two plane mirrors. So if spacing between these two mirrors is small d, then spacing between these two images S1 and S2, this will be 2D. So we have to find the part difference between the two rays. One is going from mirror uh, mi source S1 to T and other is going from source S2 to T. So the part difference will be S2 T minus S1 T. To find the part difference, we drop a normal S1 to N. So what will be the part difference? This will be S2 N. So S2 N will be the part difference between these two rays going from S1 and S2 meeting at point T. So S2 N through this triangle, we can see that S2 N, this will be S1 S2 cos theta. If theta, this is the angle of incidence angle of incidence from the light on the mirrors. This theta is the angle of incidence. So this theta, if this is angle theta, the angle of reflection will be theta and this angle also will be theta. As you can see from this figure, this is theta, this will also be theta. So part difference will be S1, S2 cos theta and what is this S1, S2? This will be 2D. So part difference is 2D cos theta. Between these two mirrors, M1 and between the rays which is moving from which is reflected from the two mirrors M1 and M2 dash. Now we have to see whether there is a change in this part difference. As we know that this glass plate is partially silvered from the back and the rays which are interfering at the point O it is reflected from the back surface. So there are two conditions whether this silvering of this glass plate is thin or the silvering is thick. If the silvering is thin, an additional part difference of lambda by 2 according to the Stokes law of reflection will be there. So our modified part difference will be, effective part difference will be in that case, this will be 2D cos theta plus minus lambda by 2. But if the silvering is thick, if this is thick silver, then there will be no additional part difference according to the Stokes law. So if effective part difference is 2D cos theta plus minus lambda by 2, then for maxima, the condition will be 2D cos theta plus minus lambda by 2. This is equal to n lambda. And for minima, the condition will be 2D cos theta plus minus lambda by 2 is equal to odd multiple of lambda by 2. But if the silvering is thick, then we have this part difference 2D cos theta. In that case, our conditions will be for maxima. For maxima, the condition will be 2D cos theta is equal to n lambda 
and for minima the condition will be 2d cos theta is equal to 2n plus minus 1 lambda by 2. So this is the condition for circular fringes. Other localized fringes are also produced in the interferometer. Let, let's discuss that in another part. Okay, now let's discuss the another type of fringes through the interferometer. These are called localized fringes. So these fringes are formed when the two mirrors M1 and M2, they are not exactly perpendicular to each other. If the mirrors M1 and M2 are not perpendicular, then M1 and M2 dash, which is image of the mirror M2 through the glass plate, these two will not be parallel. So this will not be a parallel thin film. Now let's see what would be the shape of the film then. The film will be a wedge shape film like this. If this is a wedge shape film, then fringes will be curved. They will not be circular. The fringes will be curved, having the curved surface toward the end of the wedge. Second case could be it would be this. This again is another wedge. Again, the fringes will be curved. They will not be circular in that case towards the curve towards the end of the wedge and third case will be if the spacing between the mirrors m1 and m2 dash which is the image of mirror m2 this keeps on decreasing then this could be the another case that m1 and m2 dash intersect each other in that case the fringes will be straight line they will not be neither curved nor circular fringes so these are localized fringes through the interferometer Okay, now let us conclude. So, we have studied the Michelson interferometer, which is a device based on the phenomena of interference. We have seen the interference due to division of amplitude, how the amplitude get divided, and how the amplitude after reflection through the two mirrors M1 and M2 reunite to give you the interference pattern. Now, we have seen that circular fringes, they are formed if the two mirrors M1 and M2, they are exactly perpendicular, that is, the mirror M1 and M2 dash which is the virtual mirror or image of mirror M2 they are parallel. Another is localized fringes that is either curved fringes or straight line fringes which are observed when the mirrors M1 and M2 dash they are not parallel that is they form a wedge shape film instead of a parallel thin film. I hope you have understood the concept well. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel and share with your peer group for the better understanding of this concept. Thank you.